Hey, what's up, Lightbolt Joe here. Today we are going to discuss the 2011 comedy sequel thriller film, not thriller, action mystery film, The Hangover Part 2. So Todd Phillips is uh, directing the sequel again. Ed Helms is back as Stu. Uh, Bradley Cooper is back as Phil. Zach Galifianakis is back as Alan. Uh, Justin Bartha is back as, as Doug. Uh, Ken Jeong is back as Chow, Leslie Chow. So... Uh, Paul Giamatti is in this. Very briefly, he plays an Interpol agent disguised as a gangster. It's the same plot as the first film. And a lot of these jokes are forced and parts are boring. There's like one really cool car chase, which feels like a Fast and Furious movie. Best part of the entire film is when when um, the three of them, Stu, Allen, and Filler, are waking up again from another hangover. Uh, and... Stu's character has a has the Mike Tyson face tattoo, and seeing it in the mirror the first time, Bradley Cooper's character of uh, Phil Stu has that face tattoo. Phil is laughing like this, but like actually laughing out loud and like joking with Zach uh, Galifianakis's character Valen, and that was the first take. And I had to look this up. That was the first take they did. And Todd Phillips, the director, wanted to keep it because it was a natural reaction of Bradley Cooper laughing hysterically. You know, at Ed Helms freaking out about the face tattoo. So I like seeing that they had fun making this. I just, I was bored. I'm, I'm, I was bored again, watching this again. It was just another, it was the same plot. You know, instead of a baby, there was a monkey. There was another prostitute involved. There was horrible transgender jokes in this. There was bad Asian jokes in this. There was bad gay jokes in this. But like, again, these are, these are things that we don't, talk of anymore the the not not talk of these are phrases and jokes that are not accepted anymore that are not acceptable anymore there we go okay uh 13 years 12 years later since this film came out which again is weird to say because i remember seeing it in theaters i remember all of us were like laughing in the theaters but that's like you know group laughing because a part is supposed to be funny so you have to laugh at it but then when you're watching it when you're re-watching it 12 years later, it's not as funny as you thought it was. So I don't know, man. It's, certain scenes were okay. I, I appreciate the hell of Ed Helms. He was sick for a majority of filming this. Um, he had to eat peanut butter and jelly for the duration of the filming because he was just so sick he couldn't keep food down. That was the only thing he could eat. I like that it was filmed on location in Thailand. A lot of it was in Bangkok. Um, that's it. Nothing really memorable sticks out from this. And it's what's weird is that the big reveal at the end is that uh, Stu's future wife, because he's not with the, the escort stripper from Vegas anymore, Jade. Um, he is, it's two years later. So he's now marrying this girl whose family lives in Thailand. That's why they're all are in Thailand to have this wedding. So she asked him to take her 16 year old brother, uh, Teddy, out with them. And Alan drugs a bag of marshmallows specifically for Teddy. So that way Teddy can just go to sleep and the rest of them can just hang out by the fire uh, at the hotel. But then the bags of marshmallows get switched and that's where there's another hangover and more drug deals are involved and stuff, right? Same, same plot as the first film, but it's in Thailand instead of Vegas. So anyway, the ending was nice of, you know, them having the wedding and, you know, amends being made and Mike Tyson coming because he's now a friend of Alan's and things, right? Leslie Chow is a friend of Alan's now. So it's funny having Alan as like the main reason why everyone is going to come together kind of a thing. Past characters from the first film. It was a nice wrap up, but it did over $500 million at the box office. So that's why they made a third film. I've never seen the third film because I didn't like the second film when it first came out. I only saw it once in the theaters when it first came out 12 years ago. And I understand why, because it's just okay. It's not great. It didn't do well with critics, but it was a comedy film. Again, there's like three songs sung in it, so I have to call it a musical. I respect the franchise for what it did, did because it elevated adult humor in an action kind of aspect, in a thriller, what happens next? How did this happen? How do we get from point A to point B? It brought that genre into 
tenfold basically within different uh, properties as well. So a lot of that is shown in other f certain blockbuster comedies in regards to that pace. It was it was it was fast-ish, but because it was the same plot as the first film, that's why it felt slow. If it had a different plot mixed in with some other some stuff. I mean, yeah, the Leslie Chow being targeted by Interpol was like, yeah, some other stuff. But it, it took too long to get there. Um, I don't know, man. It was it was all right. I, I could wait another 12 years to watch this again. So who knows? We'll see you in 35, 2035. That's 12 years from now. If this came out in 2011 and it's currently 23, that means it was 12 years ago since I've seen it. So that means 12 years from now, I'll watch it again. So in the year 2035, I will be 45 years old. And I'll watch it again. We'll talk then. We'll talk then. I'll take an extra review. Mitchum Mahalo.